This video was brought to you by NCIX. Great technology, selection, and service. Hello everyone, this is Dimitri with Hyra Canucks, and you probably haven't heard of Tesoro. So they're a gaming brand, very popular in Europe and Asia, and uh, finally spreading their reach over to North America. So from our initial impressions with this keyboard, it looks like a typical gaming-centric product, designed with some non-functional characteristics and just tacky aesthetical approach, in my opinion, that seems to do some things right, but also manages to right away turn off many gamers who prefer that more simple and elegant form. But you might find this to suit your palette, so let us know with a comment below. So the Tesora Colada Saint in one sentence is a half aluminum oversized mechanical keyboard with fancy lighting, uh, with fancy side lighting and the whopping price of $169. It's not often we see gamers spend this much money on peripherals and the Colada Saint might be a tough sell, especially with all the outstanding recent releases from Cooler Master, Corsair, Thermaltake and many others. So the Tesoro Colada comes in uh, both silver and black. I'm sure the black would look more appealing, but the silver does not leave any handling marks as the top of the frame is made of entirely brushed aluminum. This does give the keyboard a very sturdy feel, plus the natural cooler material helps to eliminate any sweaty palms. The purple housing around the I.O. we see here is aligned with Tesoro's own color scheme, but good luck color matching your other peripherals to this keyboard. Now, despite having what appears to be a sharp aluminum edge right where your hand would rest, the Colada is actually comfortable to type on. The keycaps here are plastic with transparent lettering that will never wear out. This is great, but it would be really awesome to see matching aluminum keycaps at this price point. Plus, the color difference is noticeable during daylight between the plastic and the aluminum, but it's not as noticeable in darker conditions. The belly of the keyboard is plastic with the same brushed grain to suit sort of the uniform style. Again, I would have liked to see a full aluminum body at this price point. There are many rubber pads that stabilize the keyboard on any surface from slipping. Plus, we have these cool dual uh, razors that are also rubberized for either a slight angle or even higher elevation, depending on personal preference. The I.O. options here are plenty with dual USB 2.0, microphone and headphone pass-through, plus a DC input if your keyboard requires more power. The USB hub is recommended for use with lower power devices like, you know, adding additional peripherals and uh, USB thumbsticks but my USB 3.0 external drive would not power on, and this is where that additional DC in would come in handy. The cable here is very thick and gray that is difficult to hide. I would like to see a black cable instead. It has two USB jacks, one for power and the other for the USB hub, plus the audio cables with markings for distinction. And so now let's move on to the keyboard layout and the switches. We have full and key rollover. They offer a variety of MX Cherry switches with our sample arrived with blacks that offer linear actuations and slightly heavy uh, presses. But but red, brown, and blue switchers are also available. The top row incorporates secondary commands for media and volume that are activated via a function switch on the bottom right. Plus, we get five dedicated profile buttons for on-the-fly switching. There is a dedicated Windows lock button that disables the Windows key, plus the on-the-fly macro recording for the three H keys below the spacebar. So you activate the macro, select your H key, flashing will indicate it's ready to record record, type in your desired command and stop the macro. So this extra usability for your thumb will come in handy for gaming if used appropriately. There are two things I don't like though about the H keys. First, they are located too far down away from the spacebar and way too low profile requiring really uncomfortable thumb readjustment. While they do uh, offer tactile and clicky registration, they're really heavy to press and our H1 key actually was completely soft, uh, but it was still registering. Now, I love the concept of utilizing the thumb uh, more on the keyboard, but the execution on the Colada isn't to par for the asking price. The keys are individually backlit in white, that I think suits the color scheme very well. And since the LED is located at the top of the switch, the lighting from top to bottom is not uniform, especially for the numbers line and the F keys. 
There are six levels of illumination that include off, 50% brightness, 100% brightness, a breathing mode with really smooth 12 second transitions, and two non-adjustable game zones that illuminate only certain keys. And I would have loved to see customizable illumination per key to set your desired backlit areas. Now, on the topic of lighting, the sides of the keyboard incorporate a really bright LED strip to illuminate the surface underneath, with colors changing based on profiles that you select. With preloaded blue, red, purple, that I think is meant to be white, but there is that obvious color mixing. And the last two are green and orange. Now, you can turn off the lighting on the sides, uh, you can set it to breathing mode, or even color loop that will change the color over time in those uh, 12 second smooth transitions. The driver software from Tesoro is definitely one of the worst we've seen in a while. It looks like something from the 90s, and could they have made a UI any smaller? Seriously, this is terrible. There is functionality built in, so don't be alarmed. Uh, you can remap each key to anything else on the keyboard. You can launch a specific program uh, with a key or assign a macro command that you can record as long as you can make out the text in the panel. It's really that small. Once you are happy with your profile, be prepared to be patient as the driver software applies the saved settings molasses style. Seriously, this is laughable. There's also no built-in memory, so driver software is required if you change computers. And in conclusion, there are a few things they did right. Uh, the variety of mechanical switches you can pick this up with is a huge bonus. The aluminum top cover that strengthens the feel of this sturdy build. Dual feet razors for a proper angle and rich I.O. hub. Lighting on the keyboard is bright, plus the side LED strips offer that extra glare if you are into that type of thing. However, the terrible UI, broken H key on our sample, and the lack of proper backlight customization for your gaming profiles uh, for their top-of-the-line premium keyboard with such a high price tag is definitely questionable. There needs to be more work to be done to refine these elements, as otherwise the Tesoro Colada is not the complete package we were expecting. And so what do you guys think of this brand? And let us know how you feel about the side lighting and the overall value you see in the Colada with the comment below. So as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more similar content. Give us a like if you found this review helpful, and we'll see you in the next one.